This is Robert Chen from Thorn Technologies. In this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up SFTP Gateway version 3.0. SFTP Gateway is a pre-configured SFTP server available on the AWS Marketplace. You can move files to S3 using an SFTP client, and with version 3.0, you now have read-write access directly to S3. This is the AWS Marketplace page for SFTP Gateway. To get to the AWS Marketplace, sign into the AWS console, and then go to aws.amazon.com slash marketplace. I usually just Google it, and it shows up near the top. Look for SFTP Gateway version 3, and then click the link. Here on the product overview page, you can read more about the product. Over on the top right, click continue to subscribe. One thing to note is that your flow might be different depending on whether you have subscribed before. For example, you might need to fill out some information for something called the AWS Marketplace Product Support Connection. Once you are subscribed to the software, you should see this page. On the top right, click Continue to Configuration. On the Configuration page, you pick how you want to deploy the server. Under Delivery Method, choose CloudFormation Template. This will reveal a second dropdown, and here you want to choose SFTP Gateway Single Instance Existing Network. For the software version, make sure it says 3. something. And for the region, change this to your preferred region. Next, click the blue button that says Continue to Launch. On the Launch page, click the drop down menu and choose Launch CloudFormation. Finally, on the bottom right, click the Launch button. This will take you out of the AWS Marketplace and into the AWS Console's CloudFormation service with the URL to the CloudFormation template pre-populated for you. Since this video was recorded prior to launch, I'm going to switch to a different browser that's using a template that I manually uploaded. Scroll to the bottom and click Next. On the Specify Stack Details page, you're going to configure some CloudFormation parameters. For stack name, Pick something that will help you identify this CloudFormation stack in the future. Under Bucket Access, you have two choices, Open and Restricted. Open will grant SFTP Gateway full access to all S3 buckets. And this is convenient if you want to do something like give each SFTP user their own bucket. But for now, we'll use the more secure option of Restricted, which only allows access to S3 buckets that follow our default naming convention. For EC2 type, a T3 medium is a cheap option for testing purposes. But if you're using this for production, you might want to go with an M5 large. For disk volume size, 32 gigs should be enough. For key pair, pick a key pair that you have access to. Otherwise, you might need to create a new key pair and start this process over again for it to show up. Under VPC, pick the default VPC because its subnets are public by default. And most of the time, the address range is going to be 172.31.00/16. Under subnet ID, pick a subnet that belongs to the VPC above. I usually pick 172.31.0.0/20 because it's easy to tell which VPC it belongs to. And for the input CIDR, paste in your computer's public IP address followed by a slash 32. This will grant your machine the ability to manage users and SSH into the server. Here's a diagram of how we set up the ports for SFTP Gateway. Port 22, which is used for SFTP, is open to the world. This is because we have a feature in the application that lets you whitelist IP addresses on a per user basis. But the IP range that we're locking down here is for port 2222, which is used for SSH, and ports 80 and 443, which is for the web admin page for managing SFTP users. So only sysadmins should have access to these ports. Once all the CloudFormation parameters are filled out, click Next. On the Configure Stack Options page, you could just keep the defaults. Scroll to the bottom and click Next. On the Review page, scroll to the bottom and click the checkbox. The reason why you're seeing this here is because we're creating an EC2 instance profile which has IAM permissions. Finally, click Create Stack. Now the CloudFormation stack is spinning up and the status says Create in Progress. 
This should take about 5 minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. It looks like it's done now because it says Create Complete. Click on the Outputs tab and copy the IP address under Hostname and paste this into a new browser tab. If you see any SSL certificate warnings, you might need to bypass them. Now you should see Welcome screen where you can create your first admin account. Enter a username, and I'm just going to use admin. And for the password, make sure you use something complex, so use mixed case, numbers, and special symbols. Once the admin user is created, log in as this user. The first thing you'll see is the SFTP users page. In this section of the video, you're going to create an SFTP user, log in using FileZilla, and then upload a file. And this file should end up on S3. Click Add User, and this will take you to the user detail page. For the username, we're going to use Test User. And for the credentials, I'm going to create an SSH key pair. SFTP Gateway also lets you configure password authentication. And to do this, just expand Advanced Options. But for now, Click Add SSH Key, and this opens a modal window. For key name, this is mainly for your benefit, just in case you configure multiple SSH keys for this user. In some cases, the client already has an existing key pair, in which case they would send you their public key, which you can paste in the text field or upload as a file. For this user, we're going to generate our own SSH key pair. This creates both a public key and a private key. The public key automatically gets pasted into this text field, and the private key gets downloaded by your browser, which in this case is testuserkey.pem. To apply this key to the user, click Add. And here you can see that the key is enabled and assigned to the user. Finally, click Save. Near the top, you should see a notification that the new user was added. Now I'm going to try logging in as this user with FileZilla. I have the Site Manager window already open, and you can get to the screen by clicking on this icon on the top left. For host, you're going to need the public IP address of the server. So switch back to CloudFormation, and under the Outputs tab, look for Hostname. Copy the IP address, and switch back to FileZilla to paste it in. For port, you can type 22, or you could leave it blank, because it defaults to 22 anyway. For the username, the user we created was test user. We didn't set a password because we created an SSH key pair instead. So for logon type, change it from normal to key file. This lets you point FileZilla to the private key, which in my case is in the downloads folder. The first time you connect to the server, you will be prompted to trust the server host key. And if you check the box, this will cache the server's public key so you don't get prompted again. Next, click OK. In the log area toward the top, you'll see a status that shows that the directory listing was successful. Next, I'm going to upload a test file. And I have a text file named testfile.txt. It looks like the file uploaded successfully. Next, I'm going to make sure that the file actually made it to S3. But first, I need to figure out the name of the S3 bucket. So switch back to the AWS console and in the CloudFormation Outputs tab, copy the name of the default bucket, open the S3 service, and search for the default bucket. And if it doesn't show up at first, try hitting the refresh icon. In the S3 bucket, you should see a users folder, followed by the folder for the test user, which we created earlier. And inside this folder, we see the test file. If you've used our previous version, SFTP Gateway 2.0, you might be used to the files disappearing from the file system after they've moved to S3. But in version 3, the files you see in FileZilla are live S3 files. To demonstrate this, I'm going to delete the test file. And in S3, the file should disappear. You might need to refresh the page if you already had it open. And that's it for this video. For more information, check out our documentation at help.thorntech.com, or you can email us at support at thorntech.com. Thanks for watching.